Hi Zen, this is Mike. Getting back with you on the question on my cam mounts. First two videos I made were just experimental videos. I use a jazz, a cheap jazz camera I picked up at the local big lots. Just cheap junk camera. I figured that way if it hits the ground I'm not out anything but maybe 20 bucks. And I am a hunter and I have a field scope. Here's the mount to it. It has this clamp on the bottom that I used to clamp on my handlebars. But, like on my one video, I lost the camera. It stripped off of just a plastic mount on the bottom, screw mount, and it stripped off of the field scope. Mount. So, I'll be using this for other things, but the audio on this is really bad. But the video isn't too too bad. It drops frames, but they, a lot of the cheaper ones, junk ones, do. This last video I have posted is actually the camera was sent by a uh, motor vlogger on YouTube, and he, I mean, he swears by this. It's a cheap. Chinese camera. I know you're against spy cams with your luck with your pen cam. But this, he swears by this. He's been using this for since, at least by, as far as I know, beginning of the year and has had no troubles except for losing one while he's on the road. It comes in a, in a box with several accessories. But most of them are junk or just cheap plastic things that are, that will snap real easy. But it came. Here is the rich. Here's the camera itself. You can set it so it's voice activated, so it works whenever you talk. It also comes with a silicone sleeve. The silicone sleeve on the back, as you see, has the two slots for like a like a belt, like a something so you can strap to your head, whatever. What he showed me to do is just use a heavy-duty plastic store card. One of those, uh, like you get from, I don't know, well she's still it's just starting to hand them out there, reward cards. And you cut it to fit into, sorry, just drop it, your slots, and you bend it. And you see how it's, I have it cut and I have it bent. Then it'll slide right in. I'll show you better with the camera in its silicone sleeve. Give me a second here. Okay, there the camera's in its silicone sleeve. You take this. And you slide it in. I'm not used to doing it this far away. You slide it in. Now, this is all he does. What I like to do is go one step further. And I'll take a piece of cellophane tape, two pieces, put one on this side just to wrap around a little bit, and one on this side just to wrap around a little bit. And that way, it'll, you'll have it set up this way. Now, my helmet is right here, my trusty, old trusty helmet. It has. Well, I'm not ready. Used to this. Little pullouts for your cheek pads. Here's what it looks like. And it has Velcro in the back. And what you do is once they're in place, do it quickly. Take your camera and you slide it in where the by side of the cheek pad, and you're kind of trying to aim it as far forward as possible, so you get a decent view. And this is what it looks like. That way, I can close my visor. You can hear me just fine. No, not too much wind noise, but yet, 
angle it decently, you get a good view, and you don't get like you don't get the view of my glasses whenever going down the road. Now, for the first, go back to my first two videos. The audio on that was a voiceover. What it was, I used this. I didn't have. There's no microphone jack on this. So what I did, so I find it real quick, is I have an MP3 player voice recorder. Just small. I think Scandis makes this one. And what I did is I added a piece of Velcro. Hopefully you can see that black on black again. Yeah, right there. And just a piece of Velcro there. And I added the other piece out of Velcro right just inside my my chin bar. And that way it'll stay in. The hassle with that is that you get a lot of breath noise. That's very hard to get rid of, I found out. And you have to try to synchronize the audio with the video. Also becomes a problem. Like I said, I probably won't be using this much. Except for if I add music to the background or something like that. Because I might be able to make some sort of a mount, mount on the side of my bike or up on my fender or something like that. That way you can you can see what's surrounding the bike going forward or have it going to its back or something like that. This camera is, I mean you get what you pay for. It is, it's got the screen, of, I think it's a one and a half inch screen that you can pop out. I mean it only takes, I think, yeah, two AA batteries. It is what it is. I mean, you pay the this, this cam here. You can go up on eBay, you pick it up for, I think it was like nine nine, not eBay, yeah, eBay nine nine cents plus shipping and handling. I mean, if you lose it, if it gets wet, destroyed, you're not out a lot. It takes the the biggest loss would be the card replacements. Now, there is a large problem with all these cheap cameras, even the more expensive ones, is the drop frames. They do drop frames if you use the large, the cheaper cards. It's more expensive, the better cards. They don't drop as much. I haven't been able to do that yet. But I hope this helps you out to understand what mounts I use. If you if you want to see this scope mount on my bike after I get the carbs done on it, I'll mount it on there and get a visual on my with my helmet cam. Hope this helps. Then see you around.